everybody. It's a day two of our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. How you all doing? Good to see you. If you are new, no worries, we're just getting started. But I am Kathleen, I'm a designer here at Adobe and I'm gonna be taking you through the next two weeks. We're gonna be learning some Photoshop. It's gonna be awesome and by the end of the two weeks you're gonna have new Photoshop skills and also a whole new portfolio piece on your Behance. you will also have a new community and I will show you that in a moment. Hello, Steve from New Zealand, always showing up. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Naru says, layer effects challenge, bring it on, Kathleen. Is that a threat? Are you threatening me? <laughs> I think you're gonna do well. We're not gonna do rocket science today, but it's gonna be a little fun exploring. Hello, what's up, Adobe Live? Way to cuff, hi. Good to see you, Adi, hi, hi. Okay, so like I said, you are not too late. We are only on day two. And if you want to register, please head on over to Behance.net slash, well, my mouse is not working. There we go. Behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. That will take you to this landing page. And I'm gonna take off this jacket cause it's squeaky. I don't think that's very sonically pleasing to anybody. What's up, Kendall? How you doing? Everyone give Kendall a shout out. Good friend, good teammate, good person. Jan Eric, hello, hello. So if you come over here to the landing page, you will see this big blue beautiful button that's gonna invite you to register for the challenge. And when you click it, you will be registered. And that means that you will get a notification every day about the live stream and about the new challenge. And also when you come here every day and you scroll down, you can now unlock the challenges. So check out over here, this was yesterday's challenge. We made an invite for Photoshop's 30th birthday because that's what we're celebrating this week. And we focused on blend modes for that. And if you want to uh, take a stab at that and you didn't get a chance to yet, go ahead and click get started and that will take you to some starter files. You don't have to use them, but they're there if they're helpful. Hopefully they are. <laughs> then you can also watch the replay of the video. These are all saved forever and you can always watch them. And it's also very cool because if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see past challenges. So say you finish the layer styles challenge today and you're like, I need more and I need it now. You can come down here and watch a bunch of other challenges. There's like hundreds of stuff, hundreds of stuffs in here. Very cool. Chad says yesterday was very cool. I agree, Chad. Day one's always fun. The hype is strong. Siraj says, it's a cool jacket. Thank you. Thrifted, you know but uh, not sonically pleasing, so I took it off. <laughs> Alrighty, so if I come down here to Paul Tranny, <laughs> he might be doing a dance in the doorway. He might just be doing that. Also chat, speaking of Paul Tranny, I think he has a surprise for you all during his stream after me with Anna. Has to do with Photoshop and the fact that it's 30 and you might you might see something very interesting, so make sure you stick around. Actually, let's chat about the uh, schedule super quick so we can look at what we got going on today. Today on Adobe Live, we are starting the day off strong with the Daily Creative Challenge with me. And then next we have some awesome compositing with Anna McNaught or Anna McNaughty. Very cool. Uh, if you follow her on Instagram, you know that she's an amazing compositor and you should definitely check her out. And then following that is the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Andrea, followed by more digital imaging, super cool. And then we're finishing up the day with another Daily Creative Challenge, but for Illustrator. And Paul is wearing a uh, Photoshop blue. So we all got to give him a thumbs up for that. Yeah, super cool. Oh, nice, Chad. Yes, there is an update for PS that was released last night. Celebrating the birthday. Thank you, Chad, for posting that. Okay, Ozan, that's a perfect question. Where can I download free templates on Adobe? I will show you when we jump into this. Um, let's open this bad boy up. So if you download the starter file for today's challenge, you will get this, it's a free template, amazing. Now really quickly, I'll show you how to get more free templates. If you go up to file, new, and you choose one of these different uh, design types. So we got photo, print, art and illustration, web. You will have different preset blank documents, but you can also scroll down here to free templates. That's right, they're free. It says it right there. So you can download those from Adobe Stock, use them as you see fit, and one of uh, this one that I'm providing is also a free one from Adobe Stock. Super cool. Alrighty, so today we're gonna be playing with layer styles in Photoshop. Uh, and if you've ever played with Photoshop before, you've probably 
experienced layer styles. It's kind of a lot of people's first foray into editing photos and editing text because it's super simple and easy and it, like we did yesterday, makes a big impact. So blend modes make a big impact, layer styles do. Let me quickly show you how to uh, use a template because if you've never used it before, it can be a little confusing, especially if you're not familiar with smart objects. So when you open up this template, you come over here to the layers panel. You'll see a couple different artboards and you can turn them on and off as you need to. Let's just turn those off for now. Zoom in on book stack. And there will be a top layer that says your design here. It's already set up for you to design on. All you need to do is double click the thumbnail. You'll notice this little icon. That means it's a smart object. So when you double click on it, it opens up a PSB or a large a Photoshop format. Uh, so say I were to turn that off and save this, we'll pop back over to our template and it's gone. So that's the beautiful thing about smart objects. They are linked to the kind of parent file. So when you make edits in it, we'll turn it back on, save it, go back to the parent, and it's back there. So it's really awesome for non-destructive workflows. You can make edits super quickly. You can manipulate things and not have to worry about your limited undos. So this is gonna be really helpful for our workflow today. So I'm gonna jump back into our smart object. And in my file, I've already laid out some text. So the whole idea of this challenge is to make like a 30th anniversary kind of coffee table book for Photoshop. Maybe it's even like a user manual or Photoshop through the ages, who knows? What's up, Anna? Good to see ya. Uh, so I want it to be kind of bold and graphic and I just chose this kind of, it's almost gaudy. It kind of go goes back to the original like Photoshop 30 years ago where things were in your face, single layer. I kind of like it. It's an interesting choice. So I'll tell you what my text is. Let's see, let's see. It is Rosewood, and I believe Rosewood is an Adobe Fonts font. So if you want to check out some more Adobe Fonts, you can quickly do that by clicking this Creative Cloud icon. That will take you to the Adobe Fonts website, but we can also live preview different fonts to see how they look. Now you don't have to do this big kind of stacked um, title like I did. It's not everyone's cup of tea. You can do whatever you'd like but let's lay down some type. So I got Photoshop here. And I think it's spelled right. Yep. It's kind of hard when it's stacked on top of each other like that to read it. So let's actually jump into our layer styles. If you've never experienced it before, this is how you get to it. We're gonna jump down here to the bottom of the layers panel. And here we go, our layer effects, our layer styles. I'm gonna click this blending options here at the top to open up the giant menu. And this is hopefully familiar to some of you. Like I said, a lot of people try to play with this first thing when they open Photoshop for the first time, just to see what they can do. So over here in the left, we can turn on some different effects, maybe add a texture, maybe a gradient overlay, although it's not showing up super well because I think I already have them set to be pretty, <laughs> um, let's see, result, reset to default list, perfect to be pretty um, nuanced. Because one thing that you don't wanna do with these layer styles is to be too heavy handed. That's kind of an easy way to spot someone that's not super maybe confident with their design skills is when they have bevel and emboss and they have the depth turned up to 800%, the opacity all the way up, and it, it looks edited, which isn't always a bad thing. But since we want this to look like a real book a real letterpressed or embossed book. We're gonna keep our values pretty small. It's gonna look pretty subtle. Chad says, I'm here and I need coffee. Get you some, Chad. I already had a cup, but I could probably use another one. Alrighty. So the whole idea about this is we are going to make an embossed version. We're gonna make a letterpress version. So one that is being risen off of this kind of leather cover of this book and one that is being pressed into it. And there's a couple different ways to do this, and we're gonna achieve it by layering different layer styles. So let's start with bevel and emboss. I have my values written out over here in my notebook because as you can see, there's a lot of input fields here. And a really good way to learn about it is just to play with it. Um, but I have mine written out because we're prepared here. Alrighty, so let's go up to depth, 100%. Looks good, oops. I committed my changes too soon. 
There we go. And one thing we want to do is if we want this to look like it's rising off of the cover is we want the direction to be up. So you can kind of see when I turn them on and off. Down looks like it's a little more pressed in and up makes it look like it's coming up. And this is really helpful over here. There's a live preview. So when I change things, it will do a little tiny kind of test preview for you for your different settings. All righty. Cool. Let's do this to maybe like two, maybe three. Chat, have you played with these layer effects and styles before? Was this your first time coming into Photoshop? Did you play with these? I know I did. Maybe that's just my story, not anyone else's. Alrighty, over here in the angle, we can play with the angle that the light is coming across and hitting. So I'm going to go about, let's say like 130 and maybe like 16 at degrees altitude. Looks good. I'm going to use a global light, but you can turn that on and off as you see fit. And then here in the highlight mode and shadow mode, that's where you're going to be able to make some like real adjustments. So we've got blend modes. They pop up everywhere in Photoshop. And since we played with them yesterday, hopefully you're familiar. I'm just going to turn the opacities all the way up and change back to normal so you can really see how these are changing. Let's change it to white as well. So for this highlight mode, if I zoom in on my design, you'll see it is highlighting on kind of the edge of my design. And if I change my angle, the highlight angle changes. So we're really almost building a model, like a 3D model. We're putting in all of the variables and it's outputting for us. So for this highlight mode, I want to change the color to closer to my actual type, maybe something a little more vibrant. Jack says, first time on Illustrator. What about Photoshop, though? Did you play with them on your first time on Illustrator? That makes sense. Pokihan, what's up? Haven't seen your name in a while. Good to see you. And then let's see for our shadow mode. This dark blue works well. If I were to do black, it would make the text look like it's kind of doesn't belong. doesn't belong on a dark blue cover. So I'm just going to color pick this dark blue, maybe make it a little bit darker. There we go, keeping things saturated and nice. And then let's change our blend mode to linear dodge add. And we're going to turn down the opacity a little bit because that looks a little bit bright and vibrant. Isn't a bad thing, but we want it to look a little more realistic. And turn down the opacity of the shadows a little bit as well. OK, it's starting to kind of look like it's coming off of the cover, right? Wade says, I confess I committed all the graphic crimes you mentioned my first round. It's a must. Totally. And some people even think using layer styles is a no-no because it like does the work for you, but that's what Photoshop is. It's a tool. Jack, you're excited to be learning. I'm excited that you're here. That's great. Okay, cool. So I like these so far. We've got our bevel and emboss happening. Now let's go ahead and add our gradient overlay. I really like the gradient overlay because it mimics the effect of light even more. So I'll turn this on and off one more time. So flat. You'll notice that up here at the top, it's light. And down here at the bottom, it's a little bit deeper. So turn it off again and on. And that mimics how light might come across these letters and put them into shadow at the bottom. You can always play with the blend mode. So maybe we do multiply, makes it even darker. Turn up the opacity. That's cool. I kind of like that even more. And then we can change our gradient so we could add a color. Although it's set to multiply, so it won't show up super well. But I'm going to keep it this like gray to transparent. So it's going to go from black to the blue. We can change our angle as always. But I like it kind of at 90. So it's light at the top, dark at the bottom. And you can always change the scale. So I like to keep it a little bit smaller so you can really see that delineation in the middle. Cool. Looks good. Any questions so far? Let me know. Jan Eric says, I see a few of those graphic crimes on album art on Spotify. Ooh, Jan Eric, what kind of crimes do you see? Lots of heavy drop shadows, perhaps. Speaking of drop shadows, let's add one. <laughs> but we're going to do it with a light touch. That's the key word, light touch. Alrighty, we're just adding a drop shadow to make it look even more like it's popping off the page, but we don't want to make it look like it's floating above the page. So the key here is making the drop shadow subtle and not too harsh. So it doesn't look like it's like paper cut out sitting on top of it. Olma, hi kids. Hi, Olma. Good to see ya. Steve says embossed business cards were big 30 years ago. That's true. 
just when Photoshop was born. I think embossing is still big. Letterpress might be even bigger, but I see a lot of people doing tonal letterpressing and embossing. So like not with any colored ink. So they'll have like a white card with a pressed in um, word or name, but no color added. So it's a little tonal, nice. All the effects, yes, Patty, let's just check all of these. Okay, for drop shadow, we have our blend mode set to color burn, but let's play with a couple different ones, see how they look. And my opacity is turned down quite a bit, so you might be able, not be able to see it very well. Whoops. Just a little, little too harsh. Let's change this color even to be closer to the actual color of the paper. Opacity, way down, looks good. We can change our angle if we wanna play with it. That's really making it pop off. Make it pop, sound like a terrible art director. Okay, I think that looks good. Mm, that's a little too heavy handed, just a little bit. It's gonna decrease the size a bit, okay. So this is still pretty nuanced, but if I were to go to file and save, let's check it out on the actual cover of the book. Cool, we can see a little bit of shadow happening. We've got the light up here and the shadow at the bottom, which is even more helpful with this template because the top is lighter and the bottom is a little bit darker. So you'd think that the light's kind of coming from up here. Looks good, looks good. Let's jump back to our design and I'm gonna show you a clever little trick. So if you want this to look more tonal, like I said, how you uh, might press in something or emboss something, but not add any color, we can do that super quickly by coming up here to fill in the layers. If we turn the fill down, it's gonna turn the layer contents down, but it's gonna keep all of the effects at 100%. So if I turn it down to zero, all of these layer effects are gonna stay there, but it's gonna take all that blue color out. It's pretty cool. We can play with this a little bit, maybe a little more nuanced. I'm gonna go back to this gradient, turn that down a little bit, because now that we've turned on the fill, it looks a little too heavy, I think. We could turn it all the way down. It really looks like it's coming off. I keep <laughs> reminding myself of the movie Face Off. Take your face off. It's coming off. Am I being clear enough? <laughs> Very descriptive. Okay, file, save, let's check it out. Cool, I like that. Imagine like running your hand over this, you could feel all the ridges of that nice detailed text. Pretty cool. It's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Nice. All right, so I've shown you how to raise it off, but let's letter press it or press it in. Make it look like it was stamped into the cover. Yes, Nicolas Cage, a classic, a classic. All right, let's just turn this off and start with a new one. So I wanted to try something a little bit more uh, designy, not just text, but let's do a giant kind of blown up graphic for the cover. And I decided on this kind of marching ants square in the shape of the mnemonic with 30 in the middle, uh, since it is the 30th anniversary. So let's make this happen. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make this marching ants square super easily. We're gonna be using the Smart Shapes or Live Shapes tool. It's over here in the toolbar on the left side, right there. You might see, get my big old head out of the way, you might see the Ellipse tool or the Line tool. Thank you, Paco. But you can always just tap U, that is the hotkey, and if you tap Shift U, that's going to cycle through. Alrighty. So let's draw a square. If you just click and drag, you can make any kind of kind of rectangular shape, but if I hold down shift, that's gonna do a square for me. Thank you Photoshop for being so helpful. I'm gonna use that smart guide that we keep seeing up here in the middle to kind of help me know what's in the center. And this is in a group that is invisible, so let's raise it above that. There we go. So we have our rectangle. Now I have the stroke set to black, and I have the stroke size, really whatever I want. I can increase it or decrease it. Let's thicken it up a little bit, and let's Make it a dashed line. There we go, we have marching ants. We can always increase or decrease the size as we see fit or if the corners don't look good to us. But cool, that looks perfect. Now we can just go into our layer effects and styles and do some uh, playing. So blending options. I'm actually going to turn the fill all the way down and then let's play with the blending options. Alrighty. 
So of course we need to do some bevel and emboss. This is still set to up, so it looks like it's coming off, face off. But let's do down, so it looks like it's being pressed in. We could just stop there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, because this is dark. Cool. So we've got the highlight, it's kind of this lighter blue. We've got the darker blue as the shadow. But let's do maybe a depth of, yeah, 100 looks good. Maybe even a deeper. It's really pressed in there. And then we're gonna do, whoa, we can soften it up. That might be a little too heavy handed, but maybe that looks pretty good. <laughs> got some excited people in the green room. If you haven't watched uh, Anna and Paul's stream, they've got a lot of energy, so you better stick around for them. It's gonna be great. All right, in the shading, we can choose our angle, we can choose our highlight color in uh, shadow mode. We've already done that though for the embossing, so we're just gonna keep that. And I'm going to add an inner glow super quickly. You can play around with this, but I have color mode set, uh, color mode set as color burn, opacities down a little bit. This just lets it look like it's actually kind of sitting down there with those shadows kind of laying around the entire inside. I'm even gonna add a little bit of satin here. Now satin might be kind of scary. A lot of people try to stay away from this because it's more effecty. You can kind of tell when people are using it. But if we turn it down, it just makes that uh, press down area look a little bit more matte and flat. We like that, we like that. Okay, we could even add a co color overlay to make the area look like it's in shadow even more. But let's see, let's lighten this up a little bit. We don't want it to look too dark. Opacity down. You'll notice that a lot of my opacities are really set low. <laughs> we don't want this to look too uh, man-made, woman-made, Kathleen-made. And there we go, we're gonna add our 30 back in. I'll let you all figure out how to do a 30. It's pretty simple. We'll save it. Cool, I like that. Although the 30 kind of looks like it is sitting on top instead of sitting below. Let's jump back into here. I think it's this, the color overlay. Nice. And let's get this exported. I'm gonna show you how to upload it onto Discord super quick to get some feedback. And I haven't mentioned Discord yet. I'm just gonna take a quick screenshot of it. Save the export step for tomorrow. Upload this to Discord. If you wanna join us over here, it's the best way to get feedback for your challenges. So you can go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. Nice. Pokehan says, will there, be cake? will there be cake for PS's birthday? I think there might be cake coming up next. I think Paul might be showing us some digital cake. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. All right, so we can go to the feedback channel, current challenge. You guys have been uploading a lot of awesome work. Kroll, this is super cool. I'm gonna upload my work, put it on my desktop, and just say, mm, I wanna know if the effect is nuanced enough. Let's be effect, nuanced enough, or should I go even lighter? Upload it, see what people have to think, and then I can upload it to Behance once I am done. Now, if you wanna try going a little bit more uh, obvious with this, maybe you add some bright colors that look like they're raising off or being pressed down, go for it. You don't have to do something so subtle like this. It's up to you, I can't wait to see what you make and make sure you post your work in this feedback channel so that we can give you good critiques before you upload them onto Behance. And if you do want to do that on Behance, you're gonna go to your profile. We already have our project from yesterday. We can click on it, we had our birthday invite, edit project, upload it there. Super easy. Uh, Scott says, with no gradient, adjusting the light source when the cover, it might be too dark. That's true. Scott, good call, good call. I might noodle on this one a little bit more uh, after we get offline. Because I, I think it is a little too dark. And hey, that's designed for you. You push and you pull and you do different iterations, you get feedback, super helpful. Philippa says, it's 9 a.m. here. Yes, actually it's 9.24 a.m. And it is time for Anna and Paul to come on to do some compositing, so stick around. Like I said, I think Paul's gonna show us something really cool. So I'm gonna be watching, you should be watching too. And I will be back tomorrow with day three of the challenge where we make something equally cool. Who knows, maybe even cooler. So I'll see you then. Be on Discord, watch the next stream, and have a good day. Bye.